Hello YouTube, Luigi here. You know, today is the 20th of September, 2019. What does that mean? That's the day that there was a global climate strike and I participated in mine locally. I just have to tell you this because it sounds so quaint. I read in the newspaper a couple of days ago that the climate strike would be held at the Four Corners in Conway Village. Now, doesn't that sound quaint at the Four Corners in Conway Village? I just It just conjures up, you know, images of uh, these quaint northern New England towns. I, I kind of like that. Um, it didn't give an address, you know, at the corner of Grand Avenue in Lexington or something. It's just at the Four Corners in Conway Village. I like that. So I participated. I fully expected to be the oldest one there, but the truth is when I showed up, it was well populated with old hippies. And I'm thinking, where's all the kids? This is the kids' movement. You know, it's about their future. Well, I was told that the uh, schools would not allow them out to leave to participate in the strike. And I think that's really bad form. I think schools are squarely on the wrong side of this issue. Okay, tonight's topic, sorry about the diversion, but that is what happened today. Tonight's topic is uh, the aerosol masking effect, also called global dimming, also called the McPherson effect. Now, the guy McPherson did not name this. It's just that he, and, not, and neither did he discover, I think the climate scientist who really, pop, really first wrote about it was, um, I believe this is right, James Hansen, the former NASA scientist who lost his job because of his climate positions, the so-called godfather of climate change, James Hansen. So there's no lightweight here. Uh, it's just that it's called the McPherson effect because every time Guy McPherson gives one of his climate lectures, he stresses this very heavily because it is exceedingly important and most people don't know anything about it. I'm going to do my best to explain it to you. I'd like to give you a little history if this doesn't get too long. I don't think it will. You know, the Israelis uh, made the desert bloom. Why? How? They discovered drip irrigation. Now, they didn't just go out and, hey, let's try this. There was a uh, botanist named Jerry Stanhill who, in the 60s, studied this. He went to uh, Israel and he put up 300 little receptors that measured the amount of daylight because he knew how many joules of energy from the sun it took to evaporate one millimeter of water. He took a very scientific approach to this. And he gathered his data and he invented the drip irrigation system which they're using to this day. Rather than all this wasteful water that we do pumping our aquifers dry, you know, the Israelis have it together. Okay, so 20 years later, it's now in the middle of the 80s, he goes, he wants to go back and revisit his results, and he sets up all his 300 sun collector meter things again, and he's noticing that there's not as much sunlight as there used to be. The strength simply isn't there. The sky is appreciably dimmer. And he develops a theory that this has to do because of industrial pollution of developing countries that are coming online, like India and China, who are burning tons and tons of coal. And, um, but there was no real proof of this until what? Until 9-11, the three days after 9-11, when the FAA shut down all air traffic in our country. Now we had data with, with all this lack of of pollution in the sky from jet exhaust. Now they had data where they noticed, yes, the sun was brighter. They had hard, they had, you know, this isn't anything new. They, they had machines that can measure this. And not only was it brighter, it was hotter. So these sulfides, these aerosols, this mist up in the sky was actually serving to cool the planet by reflecting long wave UV radiation back into space and not letting the heat get to the earth. Now this is important because we have um, the atmosphere, the high atmosphere is full of these sulfides, usually from burning unclean, dirty coal. There's no such thing as clean coal, but dirty coal. But that's not the only source 
of these uh, of these aerosols. It's also any combustion product, industrial combustion, transportation combustion, jet airline com combustion, wildfires, volcanoes. The, the upper atmosphere is full of this. So this is serving to cool the planet by reflecting the radiation back into space, but nowhere near enough, nowhere near at the same rate that the greenhouse gases are serving to warm the planet. In other words, it would be a hell of a lot worse if those particulates, if that pollution was not in the upper atmosphere. So, climate scientists have, you know, they're all full of models and conjectures and mathematics and equations. They have projected that you don't have to shut down the whole industrial engine to get this effect either, but merely a 20% drop in industrial output. And that could easily happen with a global recession. A 20% drop in industrial output. These aerosols fall to the ground very quickly in a matter of days. Some scientists say days. Others say by six weeks they've all fallen to the ground. A 20% reduction in industrial output. These things fall to the ground and the planet rises one degree Celsius very, very quickly. Meaning like in a week. One degree Celsius, boy, that would be a total disaster. So here we go. What do we do? Do we keep putting greenhouse gases in the sky, uh, which are serving to warm the planet, but if we stopped everything and cleaned up everything and everything became renewable and we weren't burning anything, then the aerosols drop out and the planet warms up faster. As Guy McPherson says, you're damned if you do and you're doomed if you don't. So this is one of these, there's no answer here, people. So Guy McPherson, who uh, went off grid, lived for years in some Central American <laughs> Belize or someplace, uh, you know, had a, had a little generator and a hand pump for his water and raised chickens and all this other stuff. And then he realized that uh, when he learned about the, the aerosol masking effect, that if everybody did this, the earth would heat up even faster. Now, for those of you who don't know, one degree Celsius is 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So a Celsius degree is a big fat degree. That's why they're often given in, given in uh, de with decimals after them, because it's a big range. So when you hear it's 40 degrees in Australia, that's 104 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? You take the 40 times 1.8, you get 72. Then what? You have to add in the 32, the difference between our zero and their zero, and you come up with 104. I figured this out myself, by the way, because I have a love of numbers. All right, the aerosol masking effect. You don't want to clean up the skies <laughs> at all because things warm up at a far more accelerated rate. Damned if you do, doomed if you don't. That's it, people. God bless you. <laughs> I love you all. All right, bye-bye.